Hello, and welcome to episode three of the Rambleverse. Rambleverse, Rambleverse, Rambleverse. I need to make that official at some point. Just <laughs> make an official Rambleverse intro. Apologies for not um, having an episode last week. I was having uh, computer problems and also kind of didn't really have like anything to really talk about because of said computer problems. I noticed just my computer's been chugging with video games lately. Um, like I, it, feel, it feels like out of nowhere, but I think it's been slowly happening. I've just kind of been able to like mitigate it by like updating options and stuff in video games. But I was playing Mirror's Edge and there was just like one level where it was like I was getting a frame a second. I swear to God, <laughs> like it was just like, eh, 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 eh. I'm like, okay, something's wrong. Something's going on. So I kind of looked around my computer. I kind of looked on the internet like, to see what I could possibly do. And somebody suggested, well, not to me, but they're like, you should check your RAM. And I did, and I also remembered, oh, yeah, I'm only using 16. I, th I think my BIOS, my uh, motherboard, can handle 64 gigs of RAM, if I remember correctly. I have to look into it again. But um, I, I actually just upgraded my RAM from 16 gigs to 32, uh, partly because, uh, one, there is an Amazon sale. Thank you, corporate overlord Amazon, for your Prime Day deals. Hashtag Amazon. Number one, I have sold part of my soul to them. They uh, own me in perpetuity forever. Uh, Amazon, number one, I love you, Jeff Bezos. Uh, you are my hero. I wish when I grow up to be half as rich as you. Um, <laughs> and... Partly also, I thought like, well, I'm not going to upgrade my computer at all until I get a job. And I, I have a job. I'm uh, This weekend, this coming weekend, I'll be training at my new job. And I will be doing that until I get some electrician work coming next spring. So, so yeah, good news happening all around here at the Cake household. And with that, that, like, that has been a noticeable upgrade. Oh. I forgot to mention, if you're watching this on the YouTube, I'll just make this really quick. You'll notice that everything has a little bit more fidelity. There's more uh, quality to the webcam part. And that's because I finally have set up and uh, set up and figured out how to use my wife's uh, DSLR camera for a webcam. And look, I'm in high definition. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Don't mind the bandaid. I had like a zit or something and I popped it and then it was just gross. And then, yeah. So, all right. <laughs> People just listening to the audio, like what is going on over there? Don't worry about it. There's just a bandaid on my head. Not a big deal. So I talked a little bit about cyberpunk 2077 earlier. Um, and actually I, I, I finished the DLC. I finally finished it. And that is a very good DLC. I will, uh, I'll put like a little section where you can skip to, but from this point on, there's going to be some cyberpunk 2077 phantom Liberty spoilers. Uh, future Zach will let you know what, when it is on the, on the audio, on the podcast format. But if you're watching the video, I'll, I'll put a chapter. Actually, I'll just do it in both just to be safe. I'll just put like skip to whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I've been saying I was going to uh, add chapters to stuff for like the last two episodes now, and I still have yet to do it. Um, so I'm probably not going to do it this time either. Just a full disclosure. Hello, this is future Zach. I'm chiming in to let you know that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 spoilers in at like 16 minutes and 30 seconds. So go ahead and skip to that if you don't want any spoilers for the Phantom Liberty DLC for Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, bye-bye. So yeah, Phantom Liberty has you going out to Dogtown and 
you're summoned to Dogtown by a person named Songbird. She tells you, hey, I need your help. Um, I might be able to help you with your relic problem. Yada, yada, yada. So you do. You, uh, you, you go to Dogtown. You meet up with her. Well, I guess you don't really meet up with her. Sorry. <laughs> she like appears in your mind kind of like how Johnny does. So you kind of meet her through that, but you don't actually meet her, meet her for a while. And when you get to Dogtown, she's like, hey, somebody's taking over the. Um, she's she works with Songbird works with basically. Is it the new United States? Basically, she works with like the government of Cyberpunk 2077. And she's in like the Air Force One with the cur- current president, Rosalind Myers. And as you arrive in Dogtown, she tells you a little bit about Dogtown, how it's run by this guy named Hanson. Not the, not the Hanson brothers, just one Hanson. And as she's explaining this to you, she's like, oh, by the way, our ship is coming down in Dogtown. I need you to get there ASAP and help out the president. When it does crash land. And you do. You go there. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, long story short, you help out the president, but the president still wants to rescue Songbird because um, Hanson has captured her. So the president wants Songbird back. And in order for that to happen, you meet up with a sleeper agent that lives in Dogtown, Idris Elba. No, (laughs) I mean, that's who plays him, but his real name is Solomon Creed. Well, his video game name is Solomon Creed. I guess that's not his real name. You meet up with him and one of his associates. And basically, it's just like this long spy thriller thing. You go to a party that Hanson's hosting. You do like a little roulette game against a couple of hackers uh, with some like spy tension. Like, oh, are we going to get caught? How are we going to get Songbird out of this one? And you come to find out that, like, Songbird is not the worst person in the world. She's, like, basically had, like, a lot of shit thrown her way from the government and from Solomon Creed. And it's just a lot of, like, uh, you know, spy, spy thriller typical stuff. And you think, like, in the entire game, she's telling you, like, hey, you know what? You get me. We're we're both dying from this thing. Like she she's dying from like having to access the black wall, which is um basically a big no no in the hacking scene of cyberpunk. If I remember correctly, beyond the black wall, like like everything that you can access is like in front of the black wall in the the world of cyberpunk. But beyond the black wall are these sentient AIs. They are basically just AIs that have become sentient and have been sealed off so that they don't cause, you know, destruction or mayhem or whatever sentient AIs will do when they are unleashed upon the world. And Slungbird has been accessing that, not repeatedly, but quite a few times, and somehow that's, like, affecting her. It's killing her, too. And I can't remember the the thing exactly, but... uh, so she's dying. She was, she's like, Hey, you know what? You're in the same boat as me. You know, we'll, we'll get this figured out to de- together. We're going to, um, I'm all over the place about this. <laughs> Basically she's interested in the same thing that you are, which is like finding a way to survive. And apparently Hanson had found some kind of device that allows them to safely remove whatever is af- affecting you. Some kind of like MacGuffin like that. Like like for you, it's like completely removing the relic out of your head safely. For her, I guess it would be to like fix her, fix her brain somehow in some way. And you go through this whole thing. You're like going out of your way. And then like one of the last missions, like the third to last mission, you have a choice on whether you can side with Songbird and do things her way or side with Solomon Creed and do things his way. And I was, I sided with Songbird right away because I didn't trust Creed. Um, and so, like, you side with her. You go through a bunch of stuff. You, like, there's a really cool section, like, right after you, you side with her, like, you're trying to escape this facility. 
and you can have her use her hacking powers to like activate mechs or blow up cars or whatever to help you kind of leave the building building so as you're leaving the building you try to you you know you're rescuing her trying to save her um and after and basically that happens you leave you successfully escape and then creed calls you and tells you like hey we're gonna find you we're gonna get you and it leads to this like epic showdown at the basically the the plane area where you what's it called again God, i'm sorry it's been like a couple weeks since i've beaten it so I'm, I'm a little rusty with the details but you go to the space terminal that like allows you to go to the moon and she's going to the moon to meet up with people to kind of get this thing figured out and get um basically she tells you like you know we're i'm going to go to the moon i'm going to meet up with these people they're going to experiment on me try to get this thing figured out and then once they get it figured out I will come back for you or I will bring you the, the cure to your problem. And you're like, okay, cool. Let's do it. So you do that. You sneak her in, into the, 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 the space terminal, I guess. And like about halfway through, like before, like halfway to the, where you get to the, the plane that will take her to the moon. Shit goes down. The U S government comes in, uh, messes with like the people working at the space terminal and they have her in a showdown. Well, you're just trying to get to the space terminal. And at least it's a really awesome like ending scene where you hook up, you don't like hook up. You like basically songbird tries to access the black wall again. And it kind of like halfway knocks her out as she like does like a pulse thing that kind of destroys a bunch of technology, destroys like a, a chopper, destroys a bunch of uh, soldiers and stuff. And then like, she can't get up anymore. So you like, you jack into her brain and you help her get to the, the shuttle to take you to the terminal, but then you get access to her like pulse power. So you're like <laughs> disintegrating people along the way. You just like, poof, and they just explode. It's pretty cool. Um, and like on that, you kind of, you know, you have like one last chat with her and she's like, Hey, by the way, uh, I was lying. There's only one cure. Basically, there's only one use of this cure, and I'm going to use it. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> she played me, too? She was telling me the entire game, like, hey, you know what? We're in this together. We're pals. I'm going to save you. If you help me save me, if you help save me, I'll help save you. You know, the whole thing. And, like, for that last-minute plot twist, it's it's been a, a long time since I've, like, actually uh, paused and thought about, like, a decision in a game. Because, like, after that, she kind of passes out, and you have the decision to either uh, deliver her to Creed, or, sorry, Solomon Reed, or help her get on the shuttle, or help her get on, like, the space, or, yeah, basically, it's either help her get on the space shuttle, help her get on the space shuttle begrudgingly, or uh, hand her over to Reed. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Because part of me is like, I don't want to hand her over because they're what if they just kill me you know like what are they going to do um but i also didn't want her to like completely fuck me over and get away with it you know of course johnny's piping up he's like oh man she got you good you gotta respect that i'm like no no johnny i don't have to <laughs> i really I, I don't have to do shit <laughs> um so i ended up uh uh handing her over to the government and, you know, Reed says, like, thank you. I appreciate that. We'll, we'll take care of you. Um, and you, you drop her off and he takes her and, and that's pretty much it. And what happens after that is like, he tells you like, Hey, you know what? Once we get this thing figured out, we'll call you and we'll get you taken care of. But I, I got, I, uh, you basically had to like wait like a week in the game before that comes up. And I didn't want to. Uh, go through time that quickly. I I don't want to like have to keep sleeping over and over again to do that. So I just watched the ending on YouTube. Um, and basically, what happens is that they successfully remove the chip out of your brain. Like they they you get you get on like a helicopter. Johnny gets to the city gets to see the city one last time. And when you wake up, 
they have completely removed like all your cyberware. Like you can't use cyberware anymore whatsoever. And it's, I think it's like two years after, like two years later, like, sorry, two years passed before, like you can talk to people again. So you can kind of like go through and like talk to like Judy and stuff and all these people see what's going on. Um, and yeah, so basically you get all your Chrome taken out and you get like jumped by a couple guys. They beat you up, but you don't die or anything. They just, they just beat you up and you can't really fight back. Cause you got no cyberware. You got no parts, man. And that's pretty much it. You basically just live the rest of your life without cyberware. And that's, you know, better than slowly dying or slowly turning into Johnny Silverhand. <laughs> um, what's even cooler than that. Well, it's not cooler than that, but I think this is also just cool is that if you side with Reed, there's like a completely different final mission. Um, I think like she, like songbird, like takes control of like some kind of ship or something. And basically you have to go fight her and try to take her down either gently or like, you can kill her or whatever. But it plays out completely different. And I think you still get access to the same ending possibilities, but it's just like the final section itself is different. And that, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, so, yeah. All right, that's it for spoilers. My final take on Cyberpunk 2077 with a Phantom Liberty DLC and now as a 2.0. I would get it on... I, I would get it. I think you should pick it up. I think it's a great game on PC now. If your computer can run it. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, go check it out. We'll talk about CD Projekt Red later on in the episode. But for now, I'll play it cool. I'll play it nice. I'm just going to say go get it. Go grab it. It's a lot of fun now. It's a good. It reminds me. It has like the same feeling of Skyrim. Where you kind of can just like explore a world do whatever you want. Um, but it's like, instead of like, you know, dungeons and dragons flavor, you know, like high fantasy or whatever. It's, it's cyberpunk baby. (laughs) Woohoo. Next on the list here, I'm just going to go through all the steam next fest demos I've played. I'm going to try to go through them as quickly as possible because I'm going to also upload me playing these games. So I don't really want to like, go super deep or hard into these games. I would just encourage you to go check out my videos. Shameless YouTube plug. (laughs) Um, First on the list, I played Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. If you don't know what that is, that is basically Deep Rock Galactic themed vampire survivors. Uh, It has like the same progression, similar to Deep Rock Galactic, where when you're doing these missions, you mine different kind of resources, like certain like crystals, pearls, um, all kinds of stuff. And you use those to like permanently upgrade all of your characters. The missions play out that you basically are on a timer. There's like five stages to a mission. Each stage, you're basically just waiting for the elite enemy to to show up. I don't think it's based on like how many enemies or like how many of the swarm you kill. You just wait for the elite enemy to show up and then you kill it while you're waiting to kill it. Um, like while, while you're waiting for it to show up, you like go throughout the level, mine stuff, kill the swarms at a certain point and unlo- unlock secondary objectives. Um, I just, said I'm not going to go into this for super long, but basically if you like vampire survivors and you wanted like another game to play, that's like it. I highly recommend checking out deep rock galactic survivor. And I should mention that with all these games, I think the Steam Next Fest is lasting another week here until October 22nd. So it'll be like six days when this podcast release releases. So you have six days to go check out all these games. Go do it. Um, highly recommend them. Well, most of them. We'll, we'll get through them. Okay, but yeah. So Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, go check it out. Another cool game, The Last Exterminator. It has like a real, this is like, um, for me, the way I would describe it, it's like playing like the old 3D Duke Nukem games, but instead of fighting like pigs and like pig cops and stuff, you're fighting human sized insects. Like you're fighting cockroaches with guns, rhino beetles that are charging at you and who knows what else they'll have in store for the future game. 
but it plays really well, plays super smooth. It's you got you get access to various various weapons. Uh, there's an Uzi in this game, which I haven't seen in a long time, or if I have, I don't really remember it. Uh, Uzis are pretty cool when they're done right, and this is one of those games that does the Uzi just right. Um, also, with the final release of the game, they're going to have level editors, which is pretty cool. That's kind of like a huge deal for like that kind of community. The I guess you kind of describe it as like the Doom, the Doom game community, where they just people make levels and people play them. And they're like, oh yeah, this is cool. Oh yeah, that's nice. I can't wait to see like the hour long video about some last exterminator video some last exterminator level that somebody made in the doom in the last exterminator engine. <laughs> What's that thing called? It's like in the doom engine. It's called like gear house or something like that. I don't know. I'll have to, I don't know what I'll have to do. I'm not going to do anything to be honest with you. <laughs> That's called like my house or your house. And there's a few videos about it on YouTube. And it's just basically a very fancy doom level. That's really interesting. But um, yeah, the last exterminator, very cool. Highly recommend it. Go check that out. Another one I recommend is another like first person shooter called Forgive Me Father 2, which is the sequel to Forgive Me Father. Uh, I never played the first one. I'm, I'm not going to pretend I'm a Forgive Me Father head. You know, I <laughs> I never um played the first one. But this one is a lot of fun. Basically, it's another first person shooter. Um, you have access to like a pit, a revolver, a shotgun. Um, and the demo, you get these weapons and also like a knife or an ax. I think, I think this is like, it. forgive me. Father two seems to be more straightforward. There, there's like some secrets and stuff in it, but basically you're going through level to level in between levels. You can upgrade your character in various ways, unlock different guns in the category. Like my melee weapon, like you start off with a shiv as a melee weapon but before the next level, I upgraded, I unlocked the axe instead, and I used that. And the axe was a lot of fun. It felt like axe cop, you know, throwing axes at, well, not throwing axes, but chopping people's heads off with an axe. It was pretty sweet. <laughs> Man, it's got Cthulhu themed stuff. Um, very interesting little setting. My only complaint was that, like, the text is at the bottom of the screen and there's no voice acting, so I kind of missed some of the stuff they were saying. Watch, watch my video to find out to uh, learn how I feel about that game. But I recommend it. I think it's worth checking out. Next one is Sentry, which Sentry is like a wave. How do you describe this? It's a first person shooter where you're defending against waves of enemies in a ship. So it's kind of like a turret, like a tower defense game almost, except for there's no towers. It's just you laying out traps and defenses and whatnot. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. There's like all kinds of cool weapons to check out, fun traps and turrets, some fun planning to do. I think I'm going to pick it up whenever fully releases. Oh, and also I think it has X. I'm pretty sure you can do like four player co-op with it. So that'd be kind of fun to play with your friends and, uh, exterminate some or not exterminate, but fight off some, some aliens with like shotgun turrets and auto turrets and bombs and all kinds of wacky guns and stuff. You get, um, a, like a real quick, you get like a basic pistol. That's like a semi-automatic pistol, semi-automatic pistol. And you also get like a power pistol, which shoots out like a, a dart. And when you shoot out the dart itself, that does damage, but then you can like right click and the dart will explode in the enemy on the enemy. And that does even more damage. So you can like shoot a guy a few times and then explode all the darts at the same time, killing them. I highly, I highly recommend that gun and the, the rail gun. Those are both of my favorite guns in that game so far. So I recommend Sentry as well. Go check that out. Next on the list is a game that I was excited for, but I don't know if I'm going to recommend it because it's very, I don't know, they're, they're, it's like not, it's not very well polished and I don't know. I feel like there's there's something there, but I think just because of the um, the translation is holding it back, and then also like the general game jankiness is kind of holding it back. But it, I mean that could be fixed. It is just a demo. None of these are like the final release of the game. But this was like my this one was like my first disappointment because I was I was excited to play it. It's a beat 'em up game called Vengeance of Mr. Peppermint. You play as a guy who's like trapped in purgatory or something. You don't really know for sure. And you're basically just fighting a bunch of dudes until you get out. 
translation is a little rough. Like you, like it's already kind of a confusing story, which is made even more confusing with the, the poor translation. And like I said, there was like some general bugginess to some of the care to some of the enemies. I mean, actually, I think the normal enemies were fine. It was just the boss. The boss kind of didn't make sense. Its attack patterns were all over the place, which you don't really notice that until you notice it, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know, like it was attacking. It was. It's hard to describe. I hope it becomes better. I hope that they kind of take the feedback from this Steam Next Fest demo stuff and they polish it to a, a fine sheen. Yeah, so look out for Vengeance of Mr. Peppermint. I don't have it on here, but I remember it. This is another game that I was kind of disappointed by. Uh, And this game was called Space Travelers, which was described as like you explore through the universe. You go through like a couple universes. You're exploring the world, like these universes, checking out the worlds on them. It sounded pretty cool. It sounded like uh, somebody was trying to do a No Man's Sky with like more trading or whatever, like able to explore the planet itself on land or on foot or whatever. But when I played it, there was just so much, so many bugs. Like, it was just hard to even, like, get into the game itself, like, to start the game. Uh, the story for it is kind of very long-winded. Like, it goes through, like, the entire history of space travel. And then it starts adding stuff that's like, oh, okay, the the Imperium, the Imperium Empire attacked, okay. United Nations formed the United, the United Solar System or whatever, okay, oh god. And, like, it keeps bombarding you with information. And... There's really not really a tutorial at all. There's one thing they explain to you. They're like, hey, welcome to the tutorial of Space Travelers. Press tab to get into cruise speed, which basically is like the faster than light travel. It slowly increases speed. And like the, you know, the longer it goes, the faster you become. And like, all right, use this, use cruise speed to go through this gate and visit the solar system. And you're like, okay, cool. Go through the gate. You, uh, you get into the solar system and they're like, all right, press J to view any tips. Good luck. I'm like, what? <laughs> you told me one thing and then you bounced. <laughs> so I was already a little, little confused and scared, but I saw earth. So I'm like, all right, we'll just cruise speed towards earth. Okay. Why not? I go, I get to earth. It takes a while. And once you get to earth, like New York is on the other side. There's a bunch of other cities and stuff you could visit, but I wanted to visit New York first because I thought, I don't know. I'm an American. I should visit an American city to kind of get my bearings. And I try to travel to New York. I accidentally go under the ocean and the ship crashes and it takes forever for the game to reload. So start all over again. So this time I go to Paris and I'm inching close. I'm inching closer to Paris. I'm trying not to like run into Paris. I press the button. It tells you to press to like land the ship. That doesn't work. But what did work is I was able to enter the trading screen, which is like you moving around as your character, selecting items in your ship, and then uh, you can like trade with the the city there. And I tried to land after that, and it did not work. Like I I got close to the ground, and then like I guess my hitbox was touched the ground or something, and so and so my ship like bounced a few times and exploded. And I was like, okay, I think that's gonna do it. <laughs> So similar to Vengeance of Mr. Peppermint, I was super disappointed by Space Travelers. I hope it gets more polish. I hope it gets, um, I hope, I hope it gets, yeah, basically that. I hope it gets more fixed in the future. And kind of like what I said in the video, I don't even know if I'm going to release the video for Space Travelers, but I mentioned that like, I don't really envy people making a space game, like a 3D fully explorable space game. That's, it's, that's a big thing to do. And I guess if I were them, you know, back, <laughs> backseat game developer here i think what i would have done is just like really polish up like one planet even if it was like mars or the moon or something and like have your guy kind of like fly around mars or the moon or whatever and kind of do that because there's really like nothing to the space travel itself there was like literally just the cruise speed yeah i don't know i I feel like that um it just needs a lot more polish man that was space travelers a few more here and we'll get into the video game news a fun little roguelike game called Gunhead, where you basically play as a mech and your objective is to destroy like these like computer brains inside these. Um, I don't know what you would call them other than like space dungeons, essentially. But like there's like, you know, like 10 or so rooms. You get like a map of like the, you get a map of like all the rooms. You see like where everything's at and you can kind of plan your approach. 
and it's really cool. It's like a lot of fun. It's very, very frantic, very fast paced. Like you're supposed to kind of go in, execute perfectly and get the hell out of there and then keep going on with your missions. A lot of fun. A lot of cool weapons. You start off with like a, a machine gun and like a, like a spiker, like a spiker weapon. Like you're, you punch, you punch a thing and the spike comes out. I still can't think of the name, but uh, I digress. Uh, Gunhead, very cool. And you like get access to uh, better mechs and later on in the game, you can like up, upgrade your mech or buy better mechs. It's all a lot of cool, cool shit. Highly recommend that. I'm probably going to add that to my wish list because it is just plain fun to play. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. Um, next. Okay. And like in the, in the vein of vampire survivors, we have apocalypse party, which I had mixed feelings about it at first, but I think I've, I've grown to like it a lot. I was mostly thrown off by the, not, po- I think it's not, it's not poorly translated, but like, it's just like not quite translated enough. That's just like noticeable. You're kind of like, what, what were they trying to say here? And there's also like a power up in the game called split urethra, which like, <laughs> like, um, I don't want to talk about a split urethra, but here we are. Um, which kind of like basically, you know, instead of one bullet, your gun shoots like three bullets or whatever. And, or two bullets, something like that. And it splits it up. And like the character that's kind of like walking you through it through the first level, like even goes like, Oh wow, it's crazy how people get stronger after having a split urethra. I'm like, why are we talking about this so much? Why? <laughs> what is the deal with this? But apocalypse party plays more close to like 20 minutes till dawn where it's not an automatic shooter. Well, you can make an automatic shooter, I guess, but you still have to mainly aim your weapon at the enemies. You know, you can pick up different weapons throughout the level. You can pick up armor, health, rerolls, all kinds of stuff. And there's just like a lot of fun powers that come with each character, it seems. Like there's a fun, like the first character you play as is all range-based weapons. He's all guns. And the second character you unlock is like all melee weapons. And they each have like wildly different abilities and special powers and stuff. And... A lot of a lot of fun synergies you can find in that in the in the game. So yeah, I think that needs a little bit more polish. But other than that, I think Apocalypse Party will be another game to check out. And the last one from the Steam Next Fest is Enshrouded. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this because we're actually going to do an ongoing series about it. I'm going to try to record some more this week. Um, but basically, you play. How do I describe this? It's an open world build your air, like build a village thing, but it play like the combat. It's kind of like the combat and inventory stuff is like Zelda based. You even have like the stamina wheels from the new Zelda games. Your character moves, jumps and swings swords and stuff like Link. It's kind of like really, I've, I've kind of like really narrowed it down, but it's, it's a lot of fun to play. Um, and the demo is like eight hours long. You basically have eight hours to play the game. And then once those eight hours are done, then you're, you, know, you can't play the game anymore. I don't know if we'll play the full eight hours, but I want to do at least one more episode because I kind of just started scratching the surface. Like I made one building and unlocked a blacksmith. And that's pretty much all I did. That was the entire first episode. <laughs> but it's just like such a huge world. It's fun to explore, fun to fight stuff fun to build things. So I, I recommend it so far. I'll keep, you know, I'll keep you posted next week to see my, to have my final opinion about it. But I think Enshrouded is also, I think Enshrouded is also worth your time. There we go. Enshrouded. Speaking of, it's to the video game news. We're not really going to talk a lot of, about a lot of news. We're going to talk about mostly two things. First, this, uh, Kotaku article about how Microsoft finally closes the massive Activision Blizzard deal. So like, if you remember earlier this year, what was it? Who was the, com- who was like the, I don't see it. In, I don't see it in this article, but if I remember correctly, you, you can, um, Oh, here, here's the link to it. I knew it was like, uh, uh some kind of organization in the United Kingdom that was basically putting a stop to this merger uh, because of um, they were worried about a few things, like one, like how Microsoft has access to has like so many properties now, 
and they were worried that this was going to become a huge thing. I'm trying to find the actual name of the, the company. Oh, the CMA. That's right. So basically the CMA was very skeptical of this whole deal. And they said, uh, no, that's okay. And then for like the last, <laughs> last from that point until like, like this Friday, this last Friday, uh, fucking Phil Spencer and like all kinds of stuff were all kinds of people working for Microsoft for like, we really need this deal, man. Our, our game passes shit. Like they were basically trying to undersell themselves so that the, the deal would come through so that they can like, you know, we're just a, a small company. We're just a small indie developer named Microsoft. We just, <laughs> we, we really need this deal with Activision Blizzard so we can make some money. Finally, we, we are just doing so bad. And then finally, I guess this Friday, they must have come to some kind of deal. Let me see if I can find what they did specifically. Uh, okay. So, so what they did is that they reworked their, basically, um, they reworked their, like their ways. That's right. The CMA were worried about like cloud gaming rights of how, you know, Microsoft seemed to have like a stranglehold on the, the cloud gaming front. So what they did is that Microsoft agreed to sell cloud gaming rights for Activision Blizzard games in the UK to publisher Ubisoft, preventing them from being able to withhold streaming licenses, streaming licenses for hits like Call of Duty and Overwatch from competitors like Sony. And also they, <laughs> they had some deal where, yeah, they'd made a deal with uh, Sony where uh, Call of Duty will be available on the PlayStation for 10 years. But everything else from Activision Blizzard is now going to be a Microsoft exclusive to plat for, to like the Xbox platforms going forward. So that's uh that's pretty cool. So I'm glad they're <laughs> I'm glad they're doing that. I'm glad Microsoft has acquired another one. What else they they have King, which is like those mobile games like Candy Crush and stuff, but I think they have like I mean, really they have countless other publishers and developers or publishers and stuff. Basically Microsoft is slowly trying to encapsulate the entire video game industry as best as it can which is funny that it got it got like the the piece of shit company activision blizzard <laughs> like don't get me wrong of course activision blizzard is a huge company makes huge games call of duty diablo world of warcraft blah 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 but i think if i like i remember right they were talking about getting activision blizzard like months after all the 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 bad news about activision blizzard came out like how bobby Kotick was Basically pushed, allegedly, allegedly like pushed one woman to kill herself, allegedly threatened to kill another person, and all kinds of like nefarious things going on behind the doors in Activision Blizzard uh, that became, that kind of came out, came out in the light after like uh, some California um, workers right thing investigated them. So it's just really interesting to see that like, hey, Let's go buy this piece of shit and see what happens. And they're like, yeah, okay, cool. We'll make so much money after buying this piece of shit company. Which, honestly, they will because people still buy Call of Duty and World of Warcraft and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know why I'm acting like it's such a big surprise. <laughs> so related to that, I, from like people were talking is that like after the deal came through, like after the deal was done, Bobby Kotick, the CEO of Activision Blizzard, was going to step, that, step down. But... um. Instead, I, I, I he's staying on until uh, the end of the year. Let's see what his actual quote is. This is another article from Kotaku. Um, let's see here. Bobby Kotick has agreed to remain in his role through the end of 2023, reporting directly to me to ensure a smooth and seamless integration, Spencer wrote in an October 13 email to staff. Um, Kotick says, I have long said that I'm fully committed to helping with the transition. Phil has asked me to stay on as CEO of ABK, Activision Blizzard King, I guess, reporting to him. And we have agreed that I will do that until the end of 2023. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, Kotick gets away with it. Kotick gets away. <laughs> Kotick. Really, all I have to say about this, this part of the story, is that whoever's out there making Bobby Kotick photoshops of him looking like Satan, keep doing it. And if you haven't done it, you need to do your part. You need to add one more image of Bobby Kotick looking like Satan into the algorithm that is Google and Bing and all that. Like I remember there was like a story where he, he, he told 
like some journalist or something that he was having a hard time with his dating life because whenever people would like look him up, there were so many images, of, images of him uh, photoshopped to look like saying like he had like little devil horns or something. So all I got to say is keep it up. He's going to get away with a lot, but hopefully we can at least ruin his dating life. That's, you know, that's the best we can really hope for in these times <laughs> in this era of capitalism where these giant dickheads get away with everything. So cool. Oh, cool. He had a, apparently he had some kind of uh, interview with James Gordon or sorry, James Corden, which fuck that guy too. So <laughs> you know what? <laughs> story keeps getting worse. The more I read it, let's go on to a different story. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> the story. <laughs> I forgot for a second. The story is not much better. Uh, we have this article from Game Informer. Um, CD Projekt Red devs form union following layoffs. Um, let's see here. This is the update. But basically, the developers at CD Projekt Red, the people who have made Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher 3, and with The Witcher games in general, I think, has formed a union. This was in response to the company doing three layoffs, which I think happened like in three months a row. Like they did like one layoff a month for like three months, if I remember correctly. Let's look through this real quick. Okay, not three months in a row, but three months like basically not super far away. It came after three months of layoffs. 29 employees were laid off at the Molasses Flood, a studio acquired in 2021 that was working on a Witcher game that is under the codename Sirius. And that was in May. Then CDPR laid off 30 employees from the team working on the Witcher's Gwent Card spinoff. And in July, 100 more people were laid off at CDPR. Um, there is a quote. Okay, from this, so this is from the union's website. This is a quote from the union's website about a it's like an FAQ thing. But basically the quote reads, we started talking about unionizing after the 2023 waves wave of layoffs when 9% of, of the reds, which I guess is CD project red people. That is roughly a hundred people were let go. Um, this event created a tremendous amount of stress and insecurity affecting our mental health and leading to the creation of this union in response. Having a union means having more security, transparency, better protection and a stronger voice in times of crisis, which I say good for them because that is kind of shitty for them to like lay off so many people and so little time. And it's not like CD project red is hurting. I mean, they were struggling for a bit after cyberpunk 2077, but that was like their own. That was them. <laughs> that was CD project red. Um, basically taking a shotgun to their feet and just re repeatedly like shooting their, their feet off like over and over again. Like first they released the game, they released Cyberpunk 2077 and it was not ready to be released. It was terrible at launch. Um, it was so bad that it got taken off the PlayStation store, which is hardly ever done. It's back on the PlayStation store now, but it was, it was let go because so many people were asking for refunds that uh, they had to take it off. You know, stockholders were really upset with the company and people in the, and like, people that were talking to the media were blaming people in QA. Like, Hey, we didn't know the game was so bad. We had no idea. Nobody told us, which everybody knows was absolute bullshit, but they know, but, um, but yeah, we, we kind of knew that they were talking out of their ass, but over time they did finally work on the game, update it more. And the game is good now, but so, yeah, so they're like, Hey, stop laying us off. Like getting late, like having like one layoff a year, that's pretty bad. But when you have three different layoffs in one year, that's fucking terrible. That's a terrible, a terrible work environment. But let's see here. Uh, Game Informer reached out to CD Projekt Red to see if it had like the people not in the union, like the let's see here. Following the news, the Game Informer reached out to the company to ask if it had a comment or statement on it. Um, Game Informer also asked if CDPR plans to voluntarily recognize the union. Here is the statement Game Informer received from a CDPR spokesperson. We have been informed about the intention to form a trade union covering game dev companies, including our company. We will act in accordance with law and comply with legal obligations that might arise from that situation. So they're going to do the bare minimum, <laughs> from what I can tell. <laughs> At the same time, it's worth mentioning that the voice of Red's team is already represented by the Red Team Representative, which is a dem dem democratically elected body representing all employees and independent of the management board. We have been working with them for over two years now, and we will continue to do so to keep our environment transparent, safe, and healthy. Which, if you're new to the video game 
uh, news cycle or basically business news cycles and stuff. This is a absolutely nothing. This is nothing. This is a, <laughs> there is no substance or uh, nothing to this quote. Like I said in uh, earlier, really, I think what we can gather from this is that they will do what they have to do, but they're probably going to try to like <laughs> try to get rid of these union people as best as they can. I mean, I hope they don't. I hope that, you know, they kind of, you know, get a change of heart and they're like, oh, well, you know, maybe we should listen to our, the people that work so hard for us and, you know, crunched for Cyberpunk 2077 when it was released terribly, you know, stuff like that. But I feel like this is not going to end well. At the very least, they're going to just do the bare minimum of what they have to do. So we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep our eyes on that, but so yeah, uh, more unions and any workforce is fantastic. More unions all over the world should be happening. Uh, support your unions. That's really the, 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 the theme of that story. And I think that's going to do it for this episode of the Rambleverse. I appreciate you sticking around. I appreciate you. Um, uh, like, again, I apologize for not uh, doing an episode last week. Um, I am glad to be back in the saddle again back in the saddle again that's another fucking <laughs> i feel like the older you get the realize you realize like the more how the more how what's the word the older you get the more you realize like everybody you knew or liked sucks so <laughs> i'm not going to get into the whole steven tyler thing what i will ask you though is if you have any comments questions or concerns you can address them below on the youtube video down in the comments or you can go to, you can email me at askrambleverse at gmail.com. That is askrambleverse at gmail.com. It's an email that I have specific, specifically for this purpose. But um, yeah, and like I said with the channel this week, it's just going to be Steam Next Fest demos. Next week, we're going to start adding the Monster Hunter video games into the mix. And then the following week, it should be back to our regularly scheduled bullshit, which I think we're going to do Shadows of Doubt and Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. That's the game. I mentioned that I was going to do Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge will come after whichever one I finish first, but we're going to go do basically two playthroughs and then three short episodes of like different Monster Hunter games throughout the series or throughout the week. So it'll be Monster Hunter, a game, Monster Hunter. So basically six episodes a week. But um, with the Monster Hunter videos, they're going to be pretty short, I think. They're basically just going to be one hunt at a time. So it'll be like me doing this mission and talking about something or doing this mission and talking about something. And then so on and so forth until the end of time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye <laughs> and ramble away.